Hey guys, welcome back to another video and today we're going to be solving the lead code question remove duplicate letters. Alright, so when you just look at the title, uh, the question seems pretty simple, right? But there's actually a small catch in the question which makes it slightly complicated. Alright, so in this question we're given a string S and we want to remove duplicate letters so that every letter appears once and only once. You must make sure that the result is the smallest in lexicographical order. So this small line over here actually changes up the question quite a bit. Okay, and uh, among all the possible results. Okay, so let me just show you what does this line mean over here. So over here we have um, a string. So this is B, C, A, B, C. So first, our first step would be, what over here are the repeating letters? So the letters that are repeating are the letters B, since we can see B two times. And the other letter that is repeating is the letter C. C is also there for a total of two times, but A on the other hand is not repeating. So we have that. So now what we want to do is, since we have two Bs and we have two Cs, we want to remove one of each. Now in this case, let's say we remove the first B and then we remove the first C. So in that case, our output will be A, B, and C. And that is also the output which they gave us over here. So that's correct. But one more thing that we could actually do is we could remove this B over here and this C over here. Because there's nothing stopping us. All The condition is that we just want one of each letter. So we can remove this B and this C over here. And that actually gives us the value of B, C, and A. But why do we choose A, B, and C over B, C, and A? And the answer to that is because A, B, C is closest, or actually in this case, it is exactly the same as the lexicographical order. And what does lexicographical order mean? Well, in simple words, it's just A through C in that order. So in this case, A, B, C is closest to that. So that's why we end up outputting that. Uh, this is another uh, example over here, and the out answer that they output it is actually this over here. And in order to kind of show that to you a lot better, uh, what I did is I just wrote a small program over here. And what this program does is it does not consider this over here. But instead, what I made it do is it removes everything up to the last instance of that letter. And I'll be going through how the code works later on. So in this case, I gave it the two uh, same two test cases, B, C, A, B, C, and this one over here. Okay, and let's see how our program uh, perform. So you can see wherever there's a hash, those are the letters that the program removed. So it removed the B and C over here, and we got A, B, and C. So we just got lucky, right? So we ended up outputting A, B, and C. But over here, we got A, D, B, C. But that's actually not the answer. That's incorrect. The answer which we're supposed to uh, give out is A, C, D, B. So hopefully you see the difference between A, D, B, C and A, C, D, B. ACDB is closer to the lexicographical order. So in this case, after A, we have C, which makes sense. And after C, we have D. Both of them make sense. But after D, we do not have B. That over there is slightly incorrect. So you can kind of think of it as like there's three letters in the right place. But over here, when you go over here, after A, you have D, which is correct. But after D, you have B, which doesn't make sense. B comes before D. And so in this case, you can kind of think of it as just being two uh, letters that are in the right order. So which is why we would prefer to output this value since it, it's closer to the lexicographical order. So hopefully you understood that small difference in the question because I think the question itself is a little bit tricky. But now what I want to do is I kind of want to go over how can we actually solve this question and what are the steps we're going to take. All right, so this is what we have over here and I actually don't have my drawing board with me so I'm just going to be using this. Okay, so anyways, this over here, we'll just kind of look at this as our input. So we have C, B, A, C, D, C, B, C. So you can just kind of look at it and tell there are a few repetitions other than the letter A, I think. Okay, now our first step over here is that we're actually going to build a dictionary. Now, what exactly is going to be the purpose of this dictionary? So what we're going to do in this dictionary is we're going to be iterating through our input over here. And each time we iterate over it, we're going to update whatever letter we're on with the current index. So what exactly is this going to give us? So let's just go through this. So first we're going to give it C, right? And where do we find it? We find it at an index of zero. So we're going to add that over there. Then we're going to give it B. So we have B and where is B? Well, it's at an index of one. And then finally we have A, which is at an index of two. And then again, we have C. So now in this case, what's going to happen is we don't create a new instance of C. But instead, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our instance of C, which is right over here, and we're going to update this with the new C value. And in this case, the new C value is nothing but 0, 1, 2, 3. So this is telling us that the 
So you can kind of understand that when we keep doing this, by the ending of this, what's going to happen is we're going to have a dictionary over here, which where it has each letter and the last index of it. So the last index where that certain letter was found. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fill out this uh, completely and show you how the end result looks like. All right, so this over here is our completed dictionary. So let me just show you one example. So let's say we go to B and then B has a value of six. So what that's telling us is that at the sixth index, which is right over here, that is the last instance of B. We're not going to have any more Bs after that value over there. So we can actually use this to our advantage in order to build the answer. So now let's just look at it naively and let's not actually consider uh, this condition over here that we had the smallest lexicographical order. So in this case, uh, in order, let's just think of removing all of the letters. So when we just want to remove all the letters, a simple thing we could do is we can iterate through our strings and each time we iterate, so we would go to C, we would check the value of C in our dictionary, it's seven, and we're gonna compare that with the index we're currently on. So if we were at C over here, we would be at index zero, and index zero is less than index seven. So in that case, we're going to end up removing everything which is less than seven, because what we're doing is we're removing everything but the last instance of it. So doing that actually makes sense, and that's exactly what I did over here, and that gave us A, D, B, C. But again, that does not follow the lexicographical order that we have. So in order to also account for that, we're going to add in a small condition which makes this a little bit more optimized. But before we do that, I just want to show you something. So I, I opened a Python over here and I actually didn't know that you could do this, but it's pretty cool. And we can actually use this to our advantage for solving this question. So over here, I'm going to have the letter A. And what I'm going to do is I can compare it with the letter B. So A, and we're going to check, is A, the letter A, greater than the letter B? So enter, and it says false. And that makes sense because B comes after A. And just to kind of show you what I'm talking about, let me remove this and I'm gonna say is B greater than A? And technically this should be true, and it is. So hopefully you kind of understand how we can use this in our question. So this is a pretty important tool that we're gonna to use and I honestly did not know that you could do this. Okay, so now that we have that, let's see how we can build our answer. So we're gonna start off with an empty results list over here. And the reason we're using a list and not a string is because it's easy to manipulate our values inside of a list. Okay, so the first step that we're going to be doing is we're going to go and iterate through our inputs. So we go to C, and when we're inside of C, we're going to check, is does C exist inside of our results? It doesn't. So if it does not exist, that means we want to add it to our results. But before we add it, we're going to go through a few conditions. But one of the conditions is, do we have an empty list? We do. So in that case, we're just going to skip that and we're directly going to add C. I'll be going over the conditions shortly. Okay, so now we have C and now the left, next letter is B. So the first thing, does B exist inside of our results? It does not exist. Then in that case, we need to add it. But before we add it, we're going to go inside of our little while loop. Now the first thing that we're going to check for is we're going to check, is this value of C greater than B over here? In other words, is the last value greater than the value we're about to insert? And in this case, the answer is yes. C is greater than B. So in that case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of this value over here. The reason for that is because since it is greater, that means it would be better for us to have the smaller value go before the greater value, since we do want it in lexicographical order. So that's what we're gonna be doing. But before we do that, we had to check a few more things. We're going to check, is this value of C the last iteration we're on? And to do that, we're going to check what index are we currently on. So we're currently on index 1, and the last iteration of C is at index 7. And that's basically telling us that, hey, this is not the last time you're going to see C. You're going to see C at least one more time after adding B. So because we know that and we're guaranteed that, according to our dictionary over here, we're going to remove the C and in place of it, and we're going to actually keep doing that for all the elements. So let's say after C we had the letter D, then in that case we would remove D uh, if all the other conditions met as well. So in this case we actually ended up with an empty array, and since it's empty what we're going to do is we're just directly going to add B. So I'll go through this a little bit faster, and now what we want to do is we're going to go to the third letter, which is A. So now we want to go through our checks before adding A. So the first thing is, is B greater than A? It is. 
B comes after A. So in that case, what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of B. But before we can do that, we want to check is the instance of B, does, it, does B come up again later on? And the answer is yes. B comes up again at least once because the last index is 6. And the index that we're currently on is actually 0, 1, 2. So we're currently on index 2. So that means that we can remove the B. And that's what we're going to do. So we're going to get rid of the B. And in this case, again, we're actually going to get stopped because now our list is now going to be empty. And that means that we need to add A. Okay. So um, now finally we have the next letter, which is C. Okay. Now, once we come to C over here, you can kind of see what, why we're doing this condition. So C does not exist over here. And now we're going to go to the A and check for A over here. So A over here is at the index 2. That's the last instance of A. And But we're currently on index 3. So what that's telling us is that if we remove A over here, we're never going to have that in our result. But the thing is, we want every letter at least one time. So that is not correct. So because of that, we're not going to do anything to our list over here. And we're just directly going to add C. Okay, so we add C. Perfect. Now we're going to go on to the next letter, which is D. In this case, what's going to happen real quickly is that D is just going to get added. So we're going to have D over here. Yeah. And after D over here, we have the letter C. Okay, so... So now we have B, and uh, since we have B, we're going to do the check. So can we actually uh, clean up our array furthermore? And we cannot because uh, we already went through the last instance of D and we're way past the number four, uh, index four. So in this case, what's going to happen is the area doesn't change, but we do have to add B. So we're going to end up adding B. And the reason that we have to add it is because B already it does not exist already. Okay, So B does not exist already. So we're going to be adding that over here. And that's really the ending. So technically, after B, we will go to C. But C already exists over here, so nothing's going to happen. And this over here is going to be our result. And what we're going to do after this, we're going to use a join function and we're going to combine it into a single string. So we're going to have A, then C, and then D, and then B. And if you want to go down to our answers, or let's just go up uh, over here, that's the answer. A, C, D, B. A, C, D, B. Okay, so hopefully that all did make sense. I try to go through it as fast as possible. And now I'm just going to go through the code, which should be pretty simple. All right, so let's start off by creating our dictionary that we had. And I'll be using comprehension in order to do so. So over here, we're going to have our character. And to that, we're good. the value of it is going to be the last index. So to that, we're just going to have the index. And how do we get this? So to do that, we can do index, comma, care. And to actually get the values, we're going to be using enumerate. So in enumerate, and we're going to enumerate the value s. And if you don't know what enumerate does, it's going to give us a tuple value of the current index that we're on and the corresponding value. So in this case, that's going to be a string. So that's going to be our dictionary over here. And now that we have our dictionary, we're going to go inside of a for loop. We're, we're going to be iterating through each of the characters inside of S. And one more thing we're going to be doing is we also want the index. So we're actually going to be enumerating it again. Okay, so to do that, all we're going to do is we're going to do for, and then we want the index comma the current character inside of enumerate S. So enumerate S. Perfect. So now that we're inside of our for loop, we're first going to check whether the current character so if this character is already inside of our current results. So if it is already inside of our result, then in that case, we don't need to do anything. And speaking of results, we actually need to create our results array over here. So I'll just call it res, and it's just going to be an empty list. Okay, so if our character is not inside of res, only and only then are we going to add it to it. So let's just directly do that. So let's do res, and we're going to append our character. So res.append, and then care. Perfect. But before we actually add it to our results, we had a few checks, right? We wanted to clean up our results area. And that's exactly what we're going to implement over here using a while loop. Right, so while, and let's just go through each of the conditions that we have. So first, we're going to check if the current index we're on is less than whatever the value that we're getting out is. So in this case, the value of our concern is going to be the very last value. And how do we get that? Well, we can just use negative one. So ne uh, the index negative one refers to the very last value. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna check for this value inside of our dictionary. Uh, in other words, actually, uh, I should be saying we wanna check for the key. So this over here uh, corresponds to a letter and we're gonna go to the dictionary and check what is the last index the dictionary is at. And if the index 
is greater than whatever that value over here is, then in that case, that means we cannot go and remove those val that value inside of our results. So that over there is one of our conditions. And then since we have several conditions, we're going to be using and. And the other condition that we have over here is we want to check if our current character is actually less than whatever this value over here is, the last letter inside of results. So let's just do that real quickly. So if our current character, which is care, uh, if that is less than whatever the last value is. And what exactly is the last value? Well, to that, get that, again, we go to res and then we go to the last index, negative one. Okay, perfect. So those are two of the conditions. And one more condition we actually had is, what if we have an empty list? So we wanna consider that as well, and res. So uh, saying and res is the same as saying if res has a length. So as long as res is not none or empty. Okay, and that should be it for our three different conditions. And each time what we're gonna do is if we go through this, we wanna remove that last value. And how do you remove it instead of a list? Well, you just use res.pop and it gets rid of that last value. All right, perfect. So that's really it for the uh, if loop, for loop over here. And after the ending of this, we're gonna be getting a results array, uh, which has all everything that we need. And uh, the problem is it's a list. So finally, we wanna convert that into a string. And to do that, we can use a dot join function. So dot join, and what are we joining? We're joining all the results inside of our string. So let's submit this. Actually, a small thing over here. So what's happening is, so the, uh, in the while loop, we go through the conditions one by one. And uh, the problem over here is, what if our uh, results list is empty and we end up going to one of these conditions? So in that case, we're actually not actually we're not actually going to get a value because results is empty in the first place. So in order to kind of fix that, what we're going to do is we're going to check if results exist and if it's not empty in the very beginning. So in that case, we're not going to get an index error. So let's submit that. And as you can see, our submission did get accepted. So finally, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Do let me know if you have any questions. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.